This is an SWX Special Sports presentation. The O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Grand Prix starts right now. Hello and welcome to the 2013 O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Grand Prix here from beautiful Spokane County Raceway. Alongside 15-year racing veteran Todd Stanley, I'm Sam Adams. What are we going to expect today out on the course? We're going to see a lot of good close racing today. We got well over 100 cars showing up today. Uh, we're on a road course, so rather than going in circles and straight lines, we get to see all kinds of different racing. Real good racing mm -hmm. at that, and a little bit of everything car-wise. What do you expect? Anything. We're going to see anything from your Miata, your BMW. Uh, you're going to see uh, ground pounders, which uh, some people think they're old stock cars, and some of them are, right up to the formula cars that are wing cars that look like little Indy cars. Maybe the best thing about this, besides the racing, is the fact that 100% of the proceeds from ticket sales today benefit the Vanessa Behan Crisis Nursery. It's a cause that's very near and dear to the folks here as part of this series. The Vanessa Behan Crisis Nursery providing immediate refuge for children in need, as well as support to strengthen families. Its mission evolved from the tragic story of two-year-old Vanessa Behan, whose child abuse related death moved the Spokane community to build a safe place to bring children in the face of crisis. The nursery provides care for children from birth to six, as well as crisis counseling, social services referrals, and other means of support for parents. Since opening in 1987, the Vanessa Behan Crisis Nursery has helped more than 72,000 children and their family. So a great day for a great cause. Stay with us when we come back. It is the 2013 O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Grand Prix from Spokane County Raceway. The O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Grand Prix on SWX is brought to you by Perfection Tire and Auto Repair, a proud sponsor of local sports. the O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Grand Prix. The O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Grand Prix being brought to you by Fasteners Inc. of Washington, Idaho, Montana. Got bolts. All right, folks, this is group five as the wind has picked up, so has the racing. 23 car field here in group five. Todd, what are we looking at uh, car wise? We've got a little bit of everything, good mixed field. Oh, Sam, we got all kinds of fun cars to watch. Got everything from RX7s who are on the pole, second and third place, all the way to your uh, BMWs. Uh, my, my little favorite uh, 510 is out there, some old RX3s. Centros, we're going to have a good mix of cars here and a lot of fun and close tight racing. A lot of close battles that we'll be keeping tabs on throughout the race here. Again, this is group five, and right away we see a battle for first between the 140 and 99 cars. Couple Mazda RX-7s to look out for, number 140 and number 99. Yeah, Jeff's been around for a long, long time, does really good with his cars. Karen uh, is last year's season championship, champion uh, chip winner in uh, EIP, so she has a stout car also. That's. Uh, Jeffrey Remford in the blue Mazda RX-7. And what are some other races we want to look out for today, Tom? Uh, I think we're going to look a little further back in the field. Uh, we're going to keep our eye on uh, Perry Hartman, number 145, and Colin Kohler, number 10. Colin runs a Honda CRX, and Perry's driving a Nissan Sentra. They've had some really tight battles, and oops, we got a little bit of an off in seven, but he gathered it up. But, right back uh, on the track. And it looks like the little center's already got around Colin, so it'll be a fun one to watch. This is where they let it loose, right here on that straightaway. Well, you said in our show open, Todd, uh, this isn't just a, <laughs> you know, just kind of slant that wheel just a little bit. This was left turn, right turn, uh, brake, gas, pretty much you drive it like a car, but on steroids. Exactly. Uh, the old. The old saying sometimes is drive it like you stole it, but uh, drive it like you stole it, but in control. Right, because remember, you also <laughs> own it. <laughs> Very much so, yes. You don't want to damage the cars because, well, they could put you on the sidelines and you can't have any fun. Well, I really like how that 140 car is holding these lines here and uh, 99 too. Uh, again, uh, this is the battle of one and two in the RX-7s. 
Yeah, both drivers are, are very consistent. If you you watch her lines, they're gonna they're gonna use their same old line. Like Karen just went through turn four here, a little bit wider than Jeffrey, um, but both are equally fast through that. Well, the course in immaculate condition once again out here, and couldn't have asked for a better day weather-wise as well. Oh, it's beautiful out. It's not it's it's not very hot. It's hot enough. Got a little breeze coming through, like you said, and. Uh, it makes it tolerable in those cars. Those cars can get very, very, very hot in the 95 plus degree days. Well, you talked about kind of that interclass racing uh, among that 92 Sentra and the 90 Honda CRX, talking about uh, Perry Hartman and Colin Kohler. Um, always nice to see, you know, th these are the battles they're looking for. And they may not be battling for first per se, but uh, they've got their own mini races going on. Yes, I do. It's, a, it's an interclass uh, rivalry. They're both running ITA. Um, both are running for the championship at the end of the year. So, yeah, it's, it's very important to them. You know, like you said, Sam, they're not the fastest cars out there, but, you know, I'll tell you, some of your best battles are mid-pack. Well, we've seen that uh, throughout the day. Some of the races you, you may not see on TV, but uh, I'll tell you what, just uh, great races all day long here at Spokane County Raceway. And if you're watching at home, strongly encourage you, if you have not done so already, come on out and watch these races. Very fan-friendly event, very fun to watch. Absolutely. The, you can go right into the pits, walk right up to these guys, there's, uh, guys and gals' cars, um, ask them questions, or they're more than happy to answer you. A lot of these racers obviously uh, run in the same circles. Uh, a lot of great places to, to run. How would you stack up uh, this course to, to others where you might see some of these racers? Uh, you'll see these racers obviously here in Spokane. You'll see them over in uh, Kent, uh, Pacific Raceways. You'll see them down in Portland at Portland International. And uh, we got a new truck in Shelton called uh, the Ridge. Um, all these guys will make this circuit. And uh, we also got to head up into Canada. There's a racetrack up there at BC called Mission. And we got a lot of Canadians down from, uh, from uh, Mission uh, joining us today and the Calgary and Alberta area. I had to get a closing of the gap there for that lead between uh, the 140 and 99 cars, the RX-7s. Yeah, it makes me wonder if Jeffrey's kind of slowing it up a little bit, uh, uh, putting the race in his own pace, uh, maybe cooling down his tires. Uh, you know, it's really hard saying, or, you know, Karen uh, in number 99 does step it up. Well, you had mentioned it earlier, that interclass racing between the Sentra and the Honda. So uh, Perry Hartman and Colin Kohler, they might have a little battle. We got a little dust up there. Yeah, it looks like we had a car spin and uh, hard to see through the dust there. Uh, for us so, and the driver. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Looks like he's making it onto the track and he'll patiently get out there and uh, join the pack. There's some other battles to look out for as well uh, further back in the field. For them, that's just as big a race. Yeah, absolutely. We just saw a couple good passing back here. Uh, Colin now, number 10 in that Honda, is right behind Perry in 145. So, like I said, that, that battle's going to heat up here pretty quickly. Just some moments ago, Mike Adams in the 244 car. That's the 1989 BMW 325i. But back to one versus two. And still holding on to that margin is Jeffrey Remford in the number 140. Yeah, the gap is stabilized now. It looks like uh, they're going to start lapping the field here. And this is where that X factor perhaps comes in. Got to be careful. You know, uh, you're just hoping the guys in front of you are watching their mirrors and, and holding their line. That's the biggest thing is uh, when you're coming to come to lap traffic, you really want them to hold their lines. Don't don't make them uh, make you guess where they're going to go. Looks like Jeffrey Ramford and the, the leader, car number 140, is coming up on some more lap traffic here. Uh, and that's allowing Karen to get back up on his rear bumper there. It's uh, that's showing to, showing to be a good race there. This ought to be interesting in the next couple uh, turns here and see yeah. how it goes. This is as close as the race has been between one versus two since the opening lap. <laughs> it's great. It's fantastic. You know, that's what happens when you come up on the back markers. But, uh, you know, he's... Number 127 there is being courteous, moved over, let the leaders go by. The flag uh, 
the flay corner stations will put out the faster cars coming by and and looks like he heated that and, and remember these cars it's it's not your standard winnebago driving through canada on the way to alaska pulling over they've got they've got races to think about themselves they're they're not maybe concerned about time so much but remember every moment they're pulling off to the side that's allowing a competitor to drive in closer to them absolutely and and when you're one of the faster cars you come through traffic you you take note on who's in front of you and what classes they are because if they're having an interclass race you don't want to balk up their race it's just important to those guys that it is to you to get by them. Yeah, when a car's half the speed, you put out the white. And looking further back in the field, we got a really, really fun battle here. That's Kim Fabro in the 103 car, the red and white Mazda RX-7. That's 1986. And back to the 140 car right there, Jeffrey Renford, who right now it is his race to lose. That's very true. Oh, what a fun battle between these two. Boy, I'd asked you earlier in this race if they had any history. Well, they're making history right now. They're, they got a little battle going on here. I think so. I, I Like I said, I didn't hear of any history uh, in the past, but uh, you know, everybody knows who everybody is, but uh, you know, both are very talented drivers. It's around turn four. And turn six, the sharpest you're going to see out on the course right here. Yeah, you got to be careful around this corner because you can push the nose out and go all the way to driver's right if you're not careful. And also coming up to turn seven here, you can do the same thing. You can shoot right off to driver's left. Boy, every time it seems that Renford's 140 car, that's when he starts to pull away. It's right around turn three to four where there's that shorter straightaway. That's when uh, the 99 car seems to be closing the gap, but I tell you what, uh, 140 really turning it on right now. Yeah, he's starting to spool it up. I think I think he uh, wants to get a little bit of distance there, a little bit of breathing room, so uh, a little bit of comfort there, you know. As he said, some good interclass battles as well, not only in that battle between those RX-7s, but throughout the course here. Absolutely, yeah, a lot of, and even further back in the class, you know, um, a lot of battles in between there. Uh, car number 108, 144, both in the same class, EIP, and they're running each other just like they were first and second place. Breaking rights in the pits. 108, the 1989 BMW 325iS. It's driven by Dan Gavrilo. Again, all eyes on the battle of one and two. Yeah, they're coming up on lap traffic again. So, in, in Karen, the number 90, 40, the number, in a number 40, uh, geez. I tell you, if, if you're in the 140 car right now, Jeffrey Remford, you're trying to create separation, but you're also just trying to avoid that all important mistake. And I, I tell you what, I think if I'm Karen Stinson right now in the 99, uh, there comes a point in time where where you stop hoping for a slip up and uh, you hope you can make a move. Yeah, you got to or, or work. Uh, you know, Karen could be setting Jeffrey up to make a mistake. Uh, unlikely Jeffrey's been around for a long, long time. So unlikely that's going to happen. But, uh, you know, sometimes it does happen. One minute to go now here in group five in this field of 23. Oh, they're feverishly waving that pass, uh, passing flag there. Coming up on uh, number 47, Jack to Christopher. Jack will give him plenty of room there. Well, as soon as I say it, I see brake lights. And that might uh, suit Karen Stimson just fine in the 99, though she's lost a little bit of ground. Yeah, she's uh, looking for a little bit of help from Jack, but now she's got to get around Jack. So, oh, Jack moved over. What a what a gentleman move there. Let the leaders let the leaders have their race. Here it is, the moment of truth here around turn six into seven. They're coming up on more lap traffic here, so it's going to get tight. It's going to get interesting. It's going to be a fun last quarter of a lap here. Remford in the 140, still in the lead, trying to pull away. Looks like he's coming up on number 97, Brian Woodbury and his Miata. Brian will move over, won't get in the way. And there you go, folks. 
Jeffrey Renford in the 140 car takes the checkered flag, holding off a furious rally from Karen Stimson in the 99. Jeffrey Renford with the victory. Yeah. It's like they're coming up side by side to wave to each other, say happy race, fun race, safe race. Folks, don't go anywhere. Much more from the O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Grand Prix coming up. You're watching the O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Grand Prix. We travel a long way to get here. We're from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It's about a 10 hour drive for us. We, uh, we're a four car team of just friends who uh, don't golf. <laughs> Open wheel cars, uh, the, 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 the general story is that real race cars don't have doors. Our rear ends are about uh, an inch off the ground. Uh, our top speeds are somewhere between 140 and 150 miles an hour. Uh, to give you some kind of uh, perspective as to the speed differentials here, uh, we turn our laps at Spokane Raceway at uh, 1 minute 27, 1 minute 28 seconds. Uh, the saloon cars, even the really powerful sedan cars, um, uh, they're, they're about 10 seconds slower. So it's, uh, it's just a whole, it's a whole different game. Coverage of the Northwest Grand Prix on SWX is brought to you by Sleep Dentistry of Spokane. Sedation and family dentistry for the whole family. Sleep through your next visit. All right, folks, this is group three and group six open wheel racing. Fastest 30 minutes you're going to find here today on the track. And uh, what a race we're going to have in store for you in group three and group six. We're underway here at Spokane County Raceway. Tell you what, during that pace lap, not a whole lot of sound, but once they got up on that straightaway and the race was on, boy, it sounded like the start of World War III out here. <laughs> yes, it does. A lot of fun. Yeah, they're too busy scrubbing their brakes and uh, getting some heat in their, uh, scrubbing their tires and getting some heat in their brakes. The lead car right now, the black with blue, 2006 Mazda, number 742. That's Blair Robertshaw. Yeah, Blair comes down from Canada, the Great White North there, and uh, that car is very fast and going to be very fun to watch. Well, right now he's got a lead as big as the Great White North. Yeah, behind him we got Greg C. Coffin in the 04, which is a 99 Miguel, uh, Formula Continental, and behind him we got a whole group of Formula Continentals. Always watch out for the guy that's got the nickname when you look at the heat sheet, and it says Greg Slingblade Coffin. As if having the last name Coffin wasn't intimidating enough, he decided to add to that by having a nickname Slingblade. It's the speed, it's the excitement, it's the perfect lap, it's setting a lap record, it's doing, if, if you set a lap, lap record in one of these race cars, you've done something that nobody else has ever done before. It's something that's, that's obtainable to the amateur sportsman, and it's just absolutely hugely frightening and a whole lot of fun at the same time. What this is, is it's called, uh, it's an open wheel race car, it's Formula Continental. It's got a two liter motor in it, it's got wings, it's got diffusers. Uh, it'll pull about two and a half G's in a corner and it'll top out at 150 miles per hour. To put it into context for people on the street, with the right gearing, zero to 50, or excuse me, zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds, zero to 100 in about nine. There's something really visceral about being able to see your wheels and go into a, go into a corner at 150 miles an hour. Uh, watch yourself break. It, you're just absolutely connected to the road with this thing. And it's hard to believe that, that something will do what one of these cars will do. All the open wheel guys run together. So you've got Formula Continentals, Formula Atlantics, Pro Series cars. It's just a great bunch of cars. Some of them are faster, some of them are slower, but they're all a lot of fun. So I've been really enjoying this and traveling around the country, meeting different racers. Uh, they're a good group of people. Uh, we have a lot of fun when we're out here. We socialize, uh, find a nice place to eat dinner maybe on Saturday night. Todd, who are some other uh, open wheel drivers we want to look out for in this race? You know, I'm looking through the sheet here and uh, further back in the field, um, of course, we've got some great Formula Continentals. 
we got George Doran, number 41. He runs a Formula Mazda, which is actually the first generation of the Formula Mazda group. Uh, another great race to watch will be the Club Fords. Uh, a little bit further back, James Hepburn at 08. He is usually the fastest guy out there. Fun to watch, very consistent, and lays down some really fast laps. And speaking of James, I believe he's coming up on some lap traffic here already. Through turn four here. Yes, he is. Boy, and that number eight car really jumps out at you, doesn't it? It does. It's a, it's a beautiful car, very well prepared. And I'll tell you, these cars, even though they don't have the wings and, and their tires are narrower, really get through the corners extremely fast. Right, these babies can move. They can, and they're just a ton of, ton of fun to watch, especially through the corners. You think they're just going to fly off, and they don't. Oh, my. Greg just got balked up a little bit here going up into turn six, but he saw him at the last minute. Coming up on the Thunder Roaster, driven by Lee, number eight there. It's a nice race we have going on there. They yes. uh, now hit turn seven. That number four car, driven again by Coffin. Coffin and uh, number 41, George Doran there in the Formula Mazda. Looks like he's uh, hanging there with uh, Greg there. They've had a few battles in the past together. Got to, seen a lot of video of those guys. It's a lot of fun to watch. Boy, we've had some dust ups uh, on the course. Uh, that's something you don't see every day. No, I've seen one of those in a long, long time. Uh, well, back to racing. That's yeah. just dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I tell you what, maybe uh, maybe Robert Shaw is driving so fast that he's creating his own weather patterns here in Airway Heights. <laughs> yeah, we're going to give him so much grief after uh, today is over about how fast he uh, ran today. There's another pass for him. Well done. Well, here comes round turn four. And the rest of the group will follow. Let's see who we have here at turn four. Yeah, look at there. So 08. Yeah, once again, James Hepburn. Yeah, James Hepburn making a move through the field there. Uh, coming up behind him is uh, 85 Swift, uh, ironically driven or uh, owned by Greg C. Coffin, who is behind him, which is the 04, so he'll move out of the way, I'm sure, because the car owner wants to get by. 's there a prototypical kind of uh, driver I ask because you are uh, one of these guys uh, what does it take to uh, drive open wheel and not only to drive but also uh, own one of these cars and, and do what you do uh, week after week you know it uh, every every owner is different uh, you know Blair is a business owner uh, Greg works for uh, Greg number zero uh, four they're driving the Miguel. You know, he's a geologist. Uh, I, myself, personally, is a, uh, a parts guy. So uh, we've even had doctors. Uh, we had a, a pilot that uh, flew 747s that, that was out here a couple years back. So it's, it's very diversified. Uh, car coming up here, number 55, is Lawrence Hayes. Lawrence Hayes is a fabricator, which makes a lot of parts for some of these cars to be out here. So it's a very diversified uh, group of guys. Their day just about to end here as we enter the final minute of action. Absolutely, yeah. These guys are, some of them are looking forward to the end, and some of them want more laps. Blair Robert shot leading from the start in the 2006 Mazda, number 742, a class act and in a class of his own here today. Blair Robert Shaw. Great racing all the way throughout. Greg Slingblade Coffin in the 99 Miguel 04. He's been having a nice race as well. So a great day here as we enter the final lap here at Spokane County Raceway. Absolutely, yeah. Hear him go through the gears there. It's a six speed box in that particular car. And there's the checkered flag for Blair Robershaw. 
tightly run race for that man. I don't think he made a single mistake out on the track. No, he ran per perfectly and flawlessly. He did what he needed to do. And, and quite frankly, if he didn't win this group, Doug on it, everybody in the paddock would have gave him a hard time about it. <laughs> it was truly his race to lose and a nice race as well by Sling Blade, Greg Coffin in the number 04 car. Great race today in groups three and six, your open wheel competition. SWX would like to thank the following sponsors for their partnership with this 2013 O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Grand Prix. Fasten your seatbelts, more to come on the O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Grand Prix. My name is Joe Clothbold. I'm the chief tech for Northwest Motorsports. We weigh the cars after they come off the course just to make sure that they're at their legal weight. We don't want cars running and qualifying that are too light. Uh, pretty much they only need to know their minimum race weight. With the Pro 3 cars, it's 2,600 pounds, uh, 2,650 pounds. Almost all the cars are overweight, anywhere from 5 to 50 pounds. If they're underweight, their qualifying gets disqualified. I look at their brake lights, I look to make sure all the lug nuts are on the wheels, and we just look underneath the hood to make sure there's no loose wires, no oil, no grease. We're looking for anything that could possibly cause a fire. And then the other thing we do at Tech is we make sure that their race gear is up to spec. We look to make sure that the, the driver's suit's clean and it has an SFI rated sticker on it. That's important. All the stuff is Nomex. It's, it's, uh, it resists fire and heat, gives the driver a few extra seconds to get out of the car in case he's on fire. The 2013 O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Grand Prix on SWX is being brought to you by Sturm Heating and Air Conditioning, a proud sponsor of local sports on SWX. And a side-by-side -side start here for group number one, 27 cars in this field. Todd Stanley, uh, give us a little breakdown here on the different kind of cars we're going to see out here in group one. Once again, we're going to see a variety of different cars. You can see the leader car uh, is a GT2 car. It is a um, Chevrolet SS, uh, Randy Blaylock in the 88 car. Uh, that car is, uh, I would say, probably a favorite to win this uh, group. Uh, looks like Scott Norton, Martin there at number 135 in the 300Z. Uh, give a little trouble to Randy there. And also some of the other cars we're going to see is we're going to see a lot of Pro 3 cars, which is a BMW 325. We're, we're probably going to have, uh, I didn't do a count out, probably right around 15 of those cars, and that'll be a tight battle towards the back. So the early lead belongs to the Nissan 350Z, driven by Scott Morton, number 135. Uh, the 2014 Chevy SS, Randy Blaylock, number 88, in second. Yeah, Scott will have the measure of this race here in the twisty bits, but uh, Randy in car number 88 with that Chevy SS should have the measure of him in the straight line, but we'll see what's going on here. Kind of brains versus brawn in, in some sense. Uh, nothing against either driver, but as far as you, you basically have your muscle car and your finesse car. Absolutely. You know, you got your Randy in car number 88, uh, that Chevy SS is 500 horses. Uh, Scott Nor Morton's car in car number 135, the 350Z, uh, as Randy's starting to make the pass on Scott there. Uh, you know, this right could be fun. It'll be fun at the big end. Both those drivers are very, very good drivers there. Both have done a lot of endurance racing. Right there, boy. You can sure see them Randy Braylock in number 88 there is, uh, well, he's gone to the 24 hours of Daytona, been one of the drivers there. I, I like working on the race cars, uh, fabricating. I like the thrill of driving the cars, and I also like the camaraderie of the people in the paddock. You try to be uh, respectful and have teamwork with other cars in the track that have different strengths and different weaknesses. Um, in terms of ultimate performance, you try to win the race at the slowest possible speed. 
so you don't use your equipment up. <laughs> There's different cars out on the course that, that are fast in certain places and slower in different places, and maybe a different car might have uh, different strengths. And, so, and you all got to get along and play fair out there. And uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll be uh, running along and come up upon a group of, of slower cars uh, that may have two or three, five, maybe even six cars all racing for position. And if I don't have anybody right behind me contesting the position in my class, uh, I try to just kind of lay back and let them race it out in a, if we're in a, a place where there's turns and things like that. And if I can wait until we get to a straightaway where just the sheer acceleration of my car makes it possible to go by them without interrupting their race, uh, then I'll do that. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, uh, after you do that for a while, they get to learn how you behave and, and you can anticipate what they're going to do and then we can all get along out on the course and have a good time. And you mentioned in, in open wheel, you know, and, and now as we get some maneuvering going on here, uh, everybody from different walks of life here, uh, here on the track. Absolutely. Well, Randy just gave up the lead there. I don't know if it was by choice, by the 702 car driven by Seth Thomas. It's a BMW M3. Nice tight battle there. That's what makes this kind of racing all, all sorts of fun to watch because you get to watch different cars. Oh, we have a car spinning. Looks like it's in turn nine. And we have a four course yellow. We have another car going off in turn six, Bahan. It was a Pro 3 car. Pull off. So that didn't take long, just a couple minutes into this 30 minute race. We've got the yellow flag. Well, that'll give them a chance to settle down and kind of cool down a little bit and gather themselves up and, and get ready for the next part of this race. So after that delay, still a battle right now. Uh, remember at the very start of this race, Randy Blaylock in the 88 car had the lead. And Gave that up, and we'll see uh, what kind of horsepower we get from that 2014 Chevrolet SS. We're back underway here now in group number one. Some pent-up aggression. These guys have been waiting to let it back open, and down the, they go down the straightaway. Yeah, it looked like Randy was on the left side of uh, Seth there, so looks like he picked up the lead. Number 88, Randy Blaylock. Blaylock, the 88 car. After they got through that first straightaway, the straightaway that uh, spans about half a mile here on the two and a quarter long track. And here they come now down the series of tight turns. Boys coming in there real hot. Yeah, I don't think like Randy liked looking at Seth's tail lights there, so I think he's going to get stepping out a little bit here. Nice inside pass by number 127, Don Genschel, and his Ford Boss 302. Now he's moved up to fourth overall. And Seth Thomas in that 702 car, a little bit back of the 88. Yeah, Randy gapped him pretty good there, but I'm sure Seth will pick it up there in that 702 car. That BMW can haul the mail. And luckily for him, it's not a Sunday because we know the Postal Service does not deliver on Sundays. <laughs> Very true, Sam. There they go down the straightaway. Learn a little bit about Randy. How about Seth Thomas in the 702? Scattering report might be a little thin on what we know about Seth Thomas, but we know one thing, he can certainly drive a car. Yeah, he's, uh, I know he drives, uh, his license is under the B BMW CCA. Uh, that's why he's running a seven number. Seven numbers are usually that uh, BMW CCA group or the SCCA licensed guys. So he's, he's been around. Meanwhile, the battle for third. Oh, 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 here we go. And turn Just got five. a little interesting, didn't it? Yes, it did. Old one, car 127, Tom Danchel, uh, got a little bit sideways there and got in the dirt. It's a Ford FR. 
in orange, the 127 driven by John Daschle. It's uh, an excellent sport. I'm in the auto business and uh, been around cars all my life. And I've always wanted to get into this my third year. Uh, I love racing. I love the people, grassroots at its best. Uh, it's amateur and uh, we're all just out here having a lot of fun. Well, I have a uh, Group 1 uh, Boss Mustang 302S. It's a uh, uh, challenge car, so it's built by Ford Racing. And then I also have a BMW M3 that I run in, in improved in production, EIP, and uh, I run them in Group 5. So I run two groups, two cars. AAF does all my support, all my mechanical, all, all my setup, transport, uh, everything, basically bring the food to the track and, and everything I need, they do for me. They're great, they're a great team. They make it very easy for me. <laughs> I can concentrate on the track, I can concentrate on the race strategy, and they take care of the car. It's a mixed group because obviously I've got a car that's maybe 10, 15 seconds faster than the other cars, and you get 30, 40 cars out there and you have to pass a lot of people, and we're all, you know, it's a 30 minute sprint race, and so it's very exciting, you know, you got to get it done now. You don't have a long race to do it in, and uh, that's what makes it so much fun. So battle of one versus two, and then three through six, really anyone's race right now. Absolutely. And the Pro 3 cars going by us right now, they're a good little battle between Cody Smith there and Charles Hartley in the number 95. Here's that straightaway here. We'll see what that 88 car can do here as it really opens it up. Meanwhile, the Pro 3s, got some, still some good races out there. Here on turn number seven from our broadcast vantage point. Yeah, it looks like Charles Hartley in car number 95 is in second place in class. He's given Cody Smith a workout in car number 225 is that blue BMW. Some of the better racing we've seen today from top to bottom. Oh, look at there, it looks like Randy Blaylock. Car 88 putting a move on Seth Thomas there. Looks like he has overtaken Thomas for the lead now in the 88 car. Randy Blaylock. I think Randy says, Seth, you had your spotlight there. You hope you enjoyed it because I want to check out now. Let's see what Seth has to say about that. They make the turn now. After that straightaway, ready to come down here. The second straightaway into turn number four. Like Randy put a little bit of distance on him, so. Uh, but you know the BMW works really good here in the twisty bits, and they are coming up on uh, some slower traffic. And we have a car off in six. Everybody putting the brakes on. They're back on the track, so the race continues. Yeah, it looks like that was car 114. It's a big break for Seth Thomas in the 702. Absolutely, yeah. See as they try to make their way through traffic how Blaylock handles in the 88. Oh, and it looks like Seth got underneath Randy there, so. Side-by-side -side racing between Blaylock and Thomas, and Thomas now has the lead once again. Oh my, is this fun to watch or what? I hope you're enjoying it at home as much as we are. Seth Thomas in the 702 is retaking the lead on Randy Blaylock's number 88, at least for the time being. Watch out. This is where Blaylock has been able to make his move, and it looks like he's going to make it right here. Oh, 88 back in the lead now. Boy, he just smiled for out at him there, didn't he? They're just taking turns out there, folks. Well, no follow the leader here. No, sir. I want the lead. You can't have the lead. And if you're getting goosebumps watching this, imagine what they're feeling behind the wheel right now. Oh, they have quite the adrenaline. Oh, boy, look at this tra lap traffic. Lap traffic here around that turn. Blaylock trying to create some separation. Good luck. He's going to go inside and go through that traffic, as will Thomas now in the 702 car. They are bumper to bumper right now. And now around turn seven. Got some side-by-side -side action further back here in the field. Going through turn seven. That's, that's the for one position. I'm referring to, absolutely. Yeah, that's for position, too. I think that's Michael McAllenine, uh, the number three car. 
Yeah, both those two guys got past uh, Don Denschel. I'm not sure when that happened. But, but right now it's Blaylock with a comfortable lead. But not too comfortable. He don't think so at this point in time. He knows that Seth wants to get back up there. And he's pitching it sideways here, so. And the checkered flag will go to the number 88. Randy Blaylock holds off Seth Thomas down the stretch to pull off the victory in group one. Ending a fantastic race here between these two gentlemen. SWX would like to thank these sponsors for their partnership with the 2013 O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Grand Prix. The neat thing about, about the conference system is that all race stewards are actually race car drivers. So we volunteer for a two-year commitment. In the first year, we're trained by the preceding steward for consistency, and then the second year, we steward. Um, the perspective of a conference steward is that of an experienced driver. So when situations arise, we have experience to judge the situation from a, a standpoint of knowledge instead of just a rule book with a, a thought of concepts and ideas. And I mean, the beauty of conference is from the green flag to the checkered flag, everybody's an enemy. Once the checkered falls, we're all best friends. Well, the biggest thing is one person just can't put this race on by themselves. They have to, it has to be a team that puts this race on. Um, everyone's assigned, everyone at Northwest Motorsports has a job. Um, and the one thing I do is I delegate I uh, trust but verify to make sure everything gets done. We've had a lot of meetings to plan this um, and it's really pulled off really well. Um, and like I said, you just can't do it without your team and we have a great team. Coverage of the Northwest Grand Prix on SWX is sponsored in part by Prime Pest Control. And we're underway here in group two this afternoon, a field of 15. Here's Todd Stanley with a little more on the field today. Yeah, we're gonna have a variety of cars here. We've got a Porsche 944 that had the pole and it looks like Guy Sully in car 146 and that Nissan Sentra took the lead right from the get-go. Uh, looking through the field here, we got some RX-7s, Miatas, and uh, looks like we got a little Dodge Neon ACR in there. Could be quite a mix of cars. Oh, I see two ACR Dodge Neons. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, you heard it here first. So let's, let's see how this race holds up after a great afternoon of racing that continues here at Spokane County Raceway. Got one uh, field of 15 once again and a late addition coming in right there. Uh, so we now have 16 cars. So uh, a late comer here. So 16 cars now in the field. First series of turns here, the four through seven. It's going to be fun to watch these cars because these are the high powered cars that we get to see in the group one. These are group in group two. And these are, uh, a lot of us call them momentum cars. So a lot of driver ability is, uh, you don't rely on your horsepower, you're more on driver ability too. Guy Selly, the front runner right now, as Todd mentioned, in the 146 and Nissan Sentra in red and white. And also mentioning that uh, Dodge Neon ACR, uh, Donato De Sandoli in the second. Oh, we just got a change for the lead there. Looked like Josh got around Guy, car number 
317. That'd be Josh Moriarty. At 317. Guy's, good looking car. Good looking car, and guy, guy Soli is going to make a race of. He's going to tuck right up on his rear bumper there. Why not? It's been the theme of the afternoon <laughs> between uh, the one and twos. Well, this will be fun because the Porsche will be uh, faster in some areas, and the uh, Sentra is going to be faster in other areas. So it'll be fun. You know, if you were to tell me, you know, j j just every man just off the street. A uh, race between a Porsche and a Nissan. I, I, I would tend to go with a Porsche. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how fast some of these uh, unknown cars are. But, you know, that little Sentra is an SER, and it's a two-liter car. And from the factory, they came with 140 horse. No, these are not the cars you're driving on the street, people. Yeah, exactly. But all these came from the street, though, they're saying. Originally, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> uh, they came from the street, but now they're they're here on the road course, and uh, there's no going back. These aren't uh, these aren't the cars you're going to find, uh, you know, uh, cruising on a Friday night in Spokane. Oh gosh, no! You don't want to drive these things on the street? They just pound you to death. Any other kind of dark horse cars you want to look out for? Anybody? Uh, obviously, we've got some veteran drivers out here. Yeah, Guy Soli in the second place car there in that center. Guy Soli's been driving around, driving for a long, long time. That car's been around for a long time. He knows it very well, so um, you'll see that. Tracy Hazard in car 168 driving the Miata. It's black with some green trim. She's uh, quite a fast driver, too, so uh, I looked, I, I'm looking to see her kind of uh, a bloom, if you will, later in the race there. She seems to come on strong towards the end. It's extremely exciting. It's a low horsepower car that you have to carry momentum to keep your speed going. Um, and we all have the exact same horsepower. Um, the cars are very competitive all the way down the field, so it's, it's very exciting. About four years ago, we bought um, an STI, 500 horsepower. We figured it was probably a safe idea to get an instructor, go around the track, and see what, what the car is all about before we drive it on the street. And from there, I just got the bug. And so we just came out to a couple of tracks, watched a few races. I wanted to be in a big group, competitive class, and so we picked Spec Miata. And yeah, I live, breathe racing day and night, yeah. So Tracy Hazard trying to gain some ground on Guy Selly for second place. Driving that 168 car. There's your leader once again. He's pretty much been wire to wire here. Uh, Josh Moriarty after overtaking the lead from uh, Nissan Sentra and Guy Selly. There's your car commercial shot. <laughs> You gonna yeah. buy one? Uh, no, I don't think the wife will let me. Got a fun little battle back here. Oh, looks like Brian Woodbury just passed uh, Danatello for position there, and it looked like he used a, a slower car as a as a, an assist. You wait for that lap traffic and make your move, and that's exactly what happened there. Oh, look at that. Car number 57 there, Dwayne Morrison, is, uh, is working that uh, neon over. Oh, look at that. He got a little bit sideways there. That'll lose his momentum. 277 car driven by Donato Di Sandoli. It's a Dodge Neon. Fine mix of car, uh, front wheel drive cars versus rear wheel drive cars there. Number 57, Dwayne there, uh, Martinson. Got the better of Brian Woodbury. Woodbury in the 97 car that you see on your TV screen right now. And we're entering now our final minute of action here in this 30 minute race in group number two. And it's been a clinic today for Josh Moriarty in his Pro 44 car, that's the Porsche 944, number three 
17. Yeah, Josh has done a wonderful job today. He should be proud of himself. You know, not only is he going to win his class, but he's winning overall, and an overall is big. Josh around us again here. That is a beautiful car. Entering turn number six. So Josh Moriarty creating more and more separation on him and the rest of the field. The Nissan Sentra, the number 146. Guy Selly gave him a run in the early going. But since then, it has been all number 317, Josh Moriarty, as he gets ready to take the checkered flag here at Spokane County Raceway in group number two. He will take the victory over number 146, Guy Selly. Congratulations, Josh Moriarty, the winner of group two. With the final race in the books here at Spokane County Raceway, that will do it here for this Northwest Grand Prix. Any final thoughts, Don? You know, we had a great weekend here. The weather was fantastic. Not too hot, not too cold. A lot of spectators watching wonderful racing out there. A lot of different cars, a lot of thrills and spills. Just can't get any better. Uh, couldn't have asked for anything better weather-wise or race-wise as well. For Todd Stanley, I'm Sam Adams saying so long. Thank you for watching this SWX production of the 2013 O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Grand Prix. So long, everybody.